Happy for laughing, y'all. I'm still laughing about you calling my dress a frock. That is hilarious. <laughs> I love that, though. It's, it sounds so much better when you say right? it. Right? Very Japanese. But um, let's talk a little bit about the luckiest girl. Um, there is a quote that says, the past never really goes away. It's mm -hmm. just still the past. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what that means for both of you in dealing with this particular project? I'll well, it's a, a Faulkner quote, and it's actually talking about racism, um, saying that the past is never really dead. It's not even past. How can we say that racism is in the past when it's still happening? I mean, I think he said this in like the 50s or 60s, but when it's still happening now. And to me, it was a very appropriate quote to use about this in relation to survivors of sexual assault, because how can you say this happened to you in the past, the sexual assault, you, you can turn the page, you can be past it, when we still haven't really made great strides in terms of supporting women who have been through this, prosecuting the people who, who commit these crimes. Um, it's, you know, rape is still the most underreported and under prosecuted rape in this country. So that quote to me just felt so poignant mm -hmm. about this topic in particular mm -hmm. um, and about this story. Yeah, I think, you know, it sort of it sort of sums up Mila's journey in the film as well. This this idea that she's, you know, she seems seemingly has everything, but actually it's her past that's really holding her back and until she starts to actually face that past and bring it back into the present that, you know, she's never going to get anywhere. And, you know, that's the journey. Absolutely. What was it about Jessica's book that made you go, you know what, I think I want to do this? Well, first of all, it's a really interesting, I mean, it's a, it's a really fun book. She, also, Jessica writes with a real wit. And it just felt like it was full of directorial challenges. I mean, it's so, you know, it's a really complicated path to tread. There's a tonal balance to it, which is really tricky, which I kind of really, really love. But most of all, I think I really sort of fell in love with, Tiffany, the, the you know Tiffany, who becomes Arnie, mm. and then when I met Jessica and I sort of equated all these things together, you know, because it was kind of this quite a daunting prospect because there's so much going on. But once I met Jessica and we sort of found a path through it very quickly, we found a friendship very quickly, and you know, so I sort of leapt in, and <laughs> he here I it. am. <laughs> I love it. He left it. He's like, hey, yeah. And Jessica, what was it about Mike that made you go? He's the perfect director for this. Firstly, it was his work on The Handmaid's Tale. And, uh, you know, at the time that we met, it was, I think Handmaid's Tale was in its first season. So, I mean, I was properly obsessed with it. <laughs> and I thought that, As I thought, are. yeah, and I thought that tonally it was right there in terms of some, like, material that's dark, but there was, like, Elizabeth Moss, like, even with her voiceover, like, there's always something, like, tongue-in-cheek or with, like, a little bit of edge to what she's saying. Um, and I just thought, this is kind of, you know, the tone we need to strike. And it's a really fine needle to thread. It is. And I feel like we were always hearing that from producers and executives, like, and we would say like, no, it's not that bad. But then remember when we got on set and we were actually doing it, we're like, oh, now we see what they're talking about. Like it was much more yeah. challenging than I think either of us thought it might be. But I think the biggest thing is that we share a sort of perspective, um, a sort of dark sense of humor about certain things, a sort of irreverence. And that's very important to this character and to this story and that we both really wanted to come through in the film. And was taking this off the page to the screen, was it more traumatic for you than cathartic or vice versa? Writing the book was cathartic. Uh, taking it from the page to screen at first was absolutely thrilling and a new challenge, a new skill and craft that I was learning and developing. And then it became very tedious because there are so many rewrites. I mean, I must have rewritten it close to a hundred times over the years. Like easily. Well, yeah, but, she, but I mean, she's pretty, she doesn't mean she's written the whole script a hundred times, but there's, you know, lots of, lots of, lots of scenes we changed and, you know, and it evolved and the things, you know, things yeah. evolved and we changed one of the things we play with the structure. Yeah. You know, we play with the structure quite a bit and then, you know, and then sort of finding characters that don't have as much, that they're more important in the novel than they are in the film. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, she's pretty amazing at rewriting because as dispirited as you were at times, you I always mean, delivered. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, writing a book is much more of a solitary endeavor and you have your one editor and that's kind of the, per and then you might have like a couple readers, people you trust, but on a film, it's much more collaborative and that is, 
I think it's a double-edged sword. Like I think it can produce some of the best work when you have, a, like we did, amazing producers and executives. But at the same time, if everyone agrees there is a problem, but everyone has a different idea about how to fix the problem, it can be very, very challenging. Cool. Well, in closing it out, I just want to use one of your British terms. Good on you for bringing me a project that was so <laughs> wonderful and intrinsic oh, and intriguing and I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. Thank you so, so oh, much. Thank you, Carla. That's so nice. Yeah, really, thank, thank you. you. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Bye. <laughs>